Look at this. I try to unlock my phone with my face and it's fine. I can do it. I try with glasses and also in this case, I can unlock it. Now I try with sunglasses and with these ones, it works. It unlocks. But with these other ones, it doesn't. It's asking me for the code. And what happens if I close my eyes? I try to unlock it with my eyes closed, but it doesn't work. But as soon as I open them, it unlocks. Well, why doesn't it unlock when my eyes are closed? Because otherwise, if I'm sleeping on the subway, someone could steal it from my pocket and unlock it in front of my face and it's goodbye to my phone. So, how does facial recognition work from a technical point of view? We'll see in this video and we'll also look at other important situations in which this technology is used, such as for security purposes in crowded places like airports. And spoiler alert, you're going to feel like you're in an action movie. As you all know, for a few years now, you've been able to unlock your phone with your face. That is, you can teach your phone to recognize you. And how do you do that? Watch this. You film your face with your phone, and this is how you teach it to recognize you. By filming the video, the technology can gauge the depth of your face. I can even wear glasses if I want to, or there's the mask option for bygone times, so that I can unlock my phone even with accessories partially covering my face. We use this technology so often that it seems mundane, but it's actually really sophisticated. Let's start with an important concept. Phones and computers in general use data in their reasoning process. In other words, they think in numbers. What facial recognition does is map your face with extreme precision using a camera, which fills your face with virtual points, believe it or not, about 30,000 points, and calculates the distance between these points. For example, how far the center of my eye is from my nose, so that's quite a distance. This is biometric data, that is data that records the geometry of your face, but that's not all. The most advanced technologies, like those of the iPhone and, since recently, Samsung too, also measure the depth of your face, not only distances. And how do they do that? By analyzing the shadows produced when an infrared light, known as a flood illuminator, illuminates your face. It's an infrared camera that can read these rays and thus understand the depth of your face. In this way, a template of your face is made, which is then translated into data and saved on the phone. Hello. Every time you want to unlock your phone, a new template of your face is created, which is translated into data and compared with the recorded template so that the technology can decide whether to unlock it or not. Now, some questions might be, what happens if I break my nose? What about if my biometric data changes slightly? Will my phone still recognize me? Or more simply, what if I wear makeup or have my hair cut? What will the phone do? Will it realize that it's me? Another thing is that as we get older, we get wrinkles and our faces change a bit. Will the phone be able to understand that it's still me a year from now? Let's go through these questions one at a time. If something drastic happens, like breaking your nose and your face changes significantly, you'll need to reteach your phone to recognize you. So you'll need to do what you did before. Make another video of your face. However, if the changes are more minor, such as makeup or a different hairstyle, the phone will be able to understand that it's still you and will therefore recognize you. As far as aging is concerned, it's something that's really interesting. Aging is a slow and gradual process, so the phone can understand that it's us, gradually changing over time. And how does it do that? It does so thanks to what's called neural network technology, which tries to replicate the brain's neuron network. This is the process. The network collects data, identifies patterns, and is thus able to predict how the data will evolve in the future. In our specific case, we're talking about biometric data, so it looks at the evolution of our data and can predict what might happen as we age, such as the appearance of wrinkles. Okay, but besides being super cool and very convenient, what's the main advantage of this technology? In short, it's extremely secure. With advanced infrared technology, the chance that a stranger could unlock your phone is one in a million, which is 20 times more secure than fingerprint recognition, 100 times more secure than a four-digit code, and equally secure as a six-digit code. Yes, facial recognition and six-digit codes are equally secure if a stranger wants to unlock your phone. But imagine, for example, if it's someone you know, it's easy for them to figure out your six-digit code. They just need to spy on you or try your date of birth. As for making a template of your face, it would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to replicate it. But what about twins? 
or siblings who look very alike, or doppelgangers. Take me, for example. Apparently, I'm Ellie Schlein's doppelganger. Could I unlock her phone? Well, the potential for deception in the case of twins or very similar siblings is actually significantly greater, especially if those involved are under 13, because at that age, facial features are not well defined. However, we can't say exactly what the probability of success would be because twins and siblings can be more or less similar. In the case of doppelgangers, it's only our perception that they are similar. The biometric data, the facial geometry, would actually differ greatly. And therefore, no, I would not be able to unlock Ellie Schlein's phone. Ellie, you can relax. However, it must be said that not all technologies are equally secure. If we think about 2D technology, which doesn't detect depth, these kinds of systems can be deceived. In fact, according to a study conducted on 59 different smartphone models, at least one in four could actually be tricked by a photo being used instead of a face. So, when you activate the facial recognition system on your smartphone, make sure you check which technology is installed on your particular model. You can find the technical specifications of any smartphone on the internet. Oh, and bear in mind that your phone can't be unlocked when your eyes are closed, when you're sleeping, for example, because your eyes must be open and clearly visible. That's true also for sunglasses. With some, like these ones, the technology works because the infrared camera can still detect our open eye. With others, however, like these ones, the technology doesn't work because this type of lens blocks infrared rays and therefore the infrared camera can't see our eye. However, this feature related to the eyes can be disabled. If, for example, I am a visually impaired person or have physical disabilities that prevent me from keeping my eyes open and I therefore need to unlock the phone with my eyes closed, I can disable this feature even though, unfortunately, the security provided by the system decreases significantly. Okay, we've understood how the technology on our phones works, how secure it is, and in which cases it can be bypassed. However, not everyone knows that this technology is also used in other areas, not just for unlocking phones. For example, phones also use facial recognition to catalog photos when we use certain applications. But above all, this technology is widely used by the police for security purposes in crowded places such as stadiums, shopping centers or airports. And in the latter, it is also used to speed up queues. But let's go through them one by one. In certain smartphones, people in the photos in the gallery are grouped into special custom folders. Look here, for example. These are the folders created by my smartphone with the people who appear in the photos on my phone, and there's a specific folder for my niece, and you might say, who cares? But the interesting thing is that the photos start from when she was just this tiny little newborn, three days old, and go all the way up to now, when she's my one-and-a-half-year-old niece, and she has grown so much and changed so much. It's incredible. My phone is able to recognize that it's the same person whether she's one day old or a year and a half, even though she's grown so much. This is thanks to the huge number of photos I've taken of my niece, because she grows slowly, and the technology, as we said, understands this. Then there are thousands of apps that use facial recognition, like those that alter our appearance to make us look older, you know? Well, on these, and this is extremely important, if it's stated in the privacy policy that we accept when we start using the app and it's mandatory that we accept it, the applications can, if they want, share our biometric data with third parties. And you might say, who cares? What could possibly happen? Well, in the worst case scenario, our identities could be electronically appropriated. Think about the videos that replicate your face and voice, the so-called deep fakes. But you can rest assured that there are increasingly effective technologies to detect fake videos. But in any case, we should always read the parts of the privacy policy that concern our rights over our data. Regarding unlocking our phones, there are increasingly secure technologies to ensure that our data is not compromised. The iPhone, for example, stores biometric data in a separate memory from the rest of the phone and it masks it, meaning it encrypts the data. In short, it can't be stolen. Okay, but apart from in our phones, where else is this technology used? Here we enter the realm of an action movie. Many countries use facial recognition to improve the security of their citizens. In Italy, we have a system called SARI, which is an automatic image recognition system, and it's like something out of an action film. 
When a crime is committed, if there is a surveillance camera on site, the SARI system compares the faces captured by the camera with those in the AFIS database, which is a state police database containing the fingerprints and mugshots of people who have previously been involved in criminal activity. As we've already mentioned, Sari is utilized in crowded places like shopping centers, casinos, football stadiums and airports where they don't just have video surveillance but also employ facial recognition technology to expedite queues. But in what way? As of March, you no longer need a passport at Dubai Airport. You can just register your biometric data, which is unique and personal, at the time of check-in. However, by law, you still need specific authorization from the police to access any video surveillance data and our privacy is protected by the so-called privacy guarantor, an independent authority whose task it is to protect our rights as far as privacy is concerned. All right, guys and gals, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it has made you a bit more aware of how important it is to know what happens to our data. I'll see you again soon for the next video, right here on Geopop, Everyday Science. 